Professor Melly Mayo, the hood postman, the hood journalist, the hood attention, the hood historian. You know that vibe. Today is Wisdom Wednesday. Be sure to click the notification, uh, thumbs up, subscribe and share. So today we're doing Wisdom Wednesday and um, let's get to it, man. I just wanna, you know, make sure you guys are doing all well in your life out there, you know what I mean? Because there's nothing better than um, establishing rapport so today we're going to talk about that a little bit but let me get to the wisdom wednesday part and then maybe we'll get into a little story who knows i don't know there are only two days in a year that nothing can happen nothing gets can be done one is called yesterday and the other is called tomorrow so today is the right day to love embrace believe and do and do what mostly us should be doing, and that's live to your highest potential. So Damu's key ways and essays, it's important that you always look to build up before you tear down. So today we're gonna to talk about rapport. Rapport is power, is a feeling of commonality with total, what totally means of being responsiveness between two individuals. And that's how you build a relationship, is having that commonality that you build between two, two individuals. Other words, you respond to his responsiveness or, your, or his responsiveness respond to the way you feel. You know what I mean? Because you guys are in a communication. You're mirroring and matching one another. So today's story is about a guy. Most know him as Randolph. Most know him as Dolph. I call him the cat, the black cowboy from time to time. But he was Randy McQuillan from Lewis Park. Good friend of mine. A lot of people may be surprised at the relationship that we have because we we established rapport. And it's, it, it was interesting about this story is that I was talking to this girl named Donna Polk and he happened to be talking to Donna Polk. And uh, one day I pulled up, he's in the white glass house, I'm in the black Grand Prix, you know. This is like in early 70s, but maybe about 70, could have been about 77, 78, somewhere in there. He had the glass house, I had the Grand Prix. So uh, baby runs out, jumps out the car with him, comes back with, there with me, talking to me. And I'm like, who is that? And she said, oh, that's my friend. I said, your friend? What you mean, your friend? You know? So it introduced me to your friend. <laughs> so by this time, baby got a spook look on her face now. She spooked for real. So I get out the car, I approach the car. I look at the car. It's Randy McQuillan. I'm a crip. He a blood, right? So immediately, we look at one another. And I said, I, I just went on to introduce myself. I told him you know what I mean because... He didn't, at the time, it took him a moment to realize who I was because we actually went to Rosecrans Elementary together. You know what I mean? He lived over near Fruit Town or used to be like not too far, right? So once I introduced, he said, oh man, what's up, man? So we shook hands and everything. We chopped it up. And they said, yeah, man, I'm going to come over and see. Yeah, man, you be seeing baby? Yeah, yeah, man. He said, man, oh man. You know, he like shucked it off you know what i mean i said yeah man you know how it go man it just you know that's just what they do but from player to another player we agreed that hey it wasn't worth for us to get into it behind this because a lot of that happened during the 70s a lot of cats got into it behind women but being the fact that we had already had established a relationship in elementary that we can now continue to build on now that we don't ran right back. And you know, don't get me wrong, I went to Whaley with him. Uh, let's see, he went to Dominguez, you know, he got into that little situation with Bodacious, but him and I have never, never got into it. So, speeding up, so I run into him again. This time he's um, taking care of his business. He's out working out of the, damn, what was the name of that motel? It was on Long Beach Boulevard. But anyway, it was called something. I don't remember the name of it. Sorry about that. But anyway, he was, you know, doing his thing, getting money. I'm getting money over there where I'm at. You know what I mean? So one day we run each other. We chop it up a bit. You know what I mean? He said, yeah, man, man, I got this thing for you, man. You know, come through. I said, yeah, where? He said, uh, just meet me over at the house. I said, on San Marcos? He said, yeah. 
I said, man, I can't come over there, Randy. You know them niggas ain't go. He said, man, look. Look, he called me Mel Mel. He said, Mel Mel, look, man. I'm telling you, man, I got you. Just come over there, man. We're going to do this. We're going to take care of this. So sure enough, man, I, I go ahead and I pull up on San Marcos. When I hit San Marcos, you got to remember, San Marcos is a dead end. So I pull up there and show up with a bunch of niggas out there, man. And Randy comes out. And, you know, he meets me and everything. And we walk to the back. Niggas is looking. They like, I don't know what they saying, you know what I mean? But I, I felt like I'm with Randy. So, you know, he told me it was all good. So we walk to the back, you know greenhouse all the way in the back so y'all know i'm what i'm saying is true <laughs> all the way in the back we go back there we chop it up and everything we do what we do you know what i mean to come back out he walk me back out the car i takes off go do what i need to do but i'm telling you this story because a lot of brothers and a lot a lot of the pyrus didn't know that Behind the scene and behind all these turf wars and all these different uh, beefs, you know what I mean? Because there were some individual beefs, and then also I mean, there was beefs where three or four guys got into it. And and occasionally you get into uh, maybe a melee or, you know what I mean, some type of dude will pull up, bust. But I'm telling you, none of this stuff really progressed or got past just a one-on-one -on -one beef or a couple of dudes beef. It didn't get past that into the 80s, into the crack cocaine era, and that spun everything out of control. And this is when the time when I was back dealing with Randy McQuiller, you know, the black cowboy, Randolph, Big Dolph. He always kept the cowboy hat, boots, and buckle. He like ride horses and stuff, you know what I mean? Good dude, man. Good dude, man. And, and we we established that, that reconnection on prior because we went to elementary school. You understand? And we were able to build from that and not let a woman interfere with what we could become possibly in the so-called game of life. You know what I mean? On, on the game side of the game, of life. You know what I'm saying? And it was, you know, a lot of money out there. So we decided to go the money route and it worked out well. You know what I mean? So I just want to share that with you, man. Rest in peace, Randy. Rest in peace, Donald McQuillan. You know what I mean? Them was my guys, you know what I mean? I knew them before, prior before the uh, Crip and Blood thing, you know what I mean? Although, you know what I mean, kid, he was, he, was a, he was a beast at it, you know what I mean? You can't take away, but I'm telling you guys, game banging is only 10 seconds on most people's lives. It's not something that people do on a consistent basis because we're much more than that. Like I told you, we come from kingdoms and complex architecture. So therefore, we... It's in our DNA. It's coded in us to be greater than what's on the surface. Because what's behind the appearance is always the reality. And if you dig deep for that reality, it will surface. And you will become that individual that God intended you to be. You don't have to look down on yourself or feel like you're not worthy enough. Just get into your mind and get into yourself, man. You know, because guess what? When you go inside, guess what you find? You find yourself, man. You find yourself, you know, and that's free game right there, man. Y'all going to take that, man, and utilize it, man, because we can't continue to not get out and communicate and establish rapport where we mirror and match because most of us, if you look at it, the only difference between a crip and blood is a name. They dress the same. They look the same. They, they put one wear the rag on the right, the other one wear the rag on the left. One rag is blue, one rag is red. It's the same thing in politics, red and blue. You got the Republicans, you got the Democrats, but both belong to the same goddamn bird. So don't misconstrue this thing. You people that's out there in New York and New Jersey that believe y'all, y'all get a total understanding of this culture, it's much deeper than what you think. And you're, 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 you're missing some points. You're missing points of reference and you're missing some points of, of the articulation of what this thing is about. It's a great deal more than you saying that this dude shot this dude to death. No, no, no. That happens. That happens. But only on, on in, in our time, only on unique circumstances. There was things that couldn't that spun out of control and nothing could be control. But I'm telling you, man, there wasn't a whole lot of bodies in the 70s based on gangbang. There was a whole lot of these, you know. 
you know, you win some and you lose some, but you live to fight another day. And you guys need to get out of this thing where y'all want to see and hear all these stories about, you know, the, the guts, blood, and glory. I mean, there's some guys that tell them stories, but I don't think they're necessary because I'm here to educate, motivate, and elevate, you know what I mean, and get you into a space, especially our young, you know what I mean? It ain't the fact that they don't know how to think. It ain't the fact that they don't know what thinking is. And no, it, it, that's the problem. They don't know what thinking is because they don't understand. Because they can equate thinking with feelings. And once you emotionalize something, it becomes reactionary. And reactionary is never good amongst men. Men are reserved. They are resilient. They take in information. They reason. We're not women, man. Women are reactionary. They, they live out of their feelings. So, you know, you guys got to get out of that. You know what I mean? You got to get out of that. So let's, just, let's build on the rapport. Let's build in the, feel, in the feeling of commonality. Well, rapport means total responsiveness. Responsible for individuality and the duality of man. Peace. Professor Belly Mail, the hood postman. You know the vibe. I'm out.